die Glocken stürmten vom Bernwartsturm. Der Regen durchrauschte die Straßen. Und durch die Glocken und durch den Sturm erschallte des Ohrhorns Blasen. Und durch die Glocken und durch den Sturm erschallte des Ohrhorns Blasen. Das Büffelhorn, das so lang geruht, Feitstoß Berg namens aus der Lade. Das alte Horn, das brüllt nach Blut und wimmert Gott Gnade. Gott Gnade. Das alte Horn, das brüllt nach Blut und wimmert Gott Gnade. Gnade dir Gott, du Ritterschaft! Der Bauer stand auf im Lande und tausendjährige Bauernkraft macht Schild und Scherpe zu Schande und tausendjährige Bauernkraft Schild und Scherpe zu Schande. zu Schande, die Klingsburg hoch am Berge lag. Sie zogen ihn auf in Waffen, auframmte der Schmied mit einem Schlag. Das Tor, das er frohend geschaffen. Auframmte der Schmied mit einem Schlag Das Tor, das er Fronen geschaffen Dem Ritter fuhr ein Schlag ins Gesicht Und ein Sprache ihn zwischen die Rippen Er brachte das Schwert aus der Scheide nicht und nicht den Fluch von den Lippen. Er brachte das Schwert aus der Scheide nicht. Und nicht den Fluch von den Lippen. Aufrauschte die Flamme mit aller Kraft. Brach Balken und Bogen und Bande. Ja, gerade dir Gott, du Ritterschaft! Der Bauer stund auf im Lande! Ja, gerade dir Gott, du Ritterschaft! Der Bauer stund auf im Lande! Stalinga, comrade, comrade, was the self-designation of the rebels in the Stalinga uprising in Old Saxony from 841 to 845 AD, which was named after them. In it, the lower Saxon classes of the Frillings, free farmers, and Leighton, semi-free, rose up against the Saxon nobility, which was cooperating with the Franks. The aim of the rebels was primarily to restore their original right to political participation, which had been abolished 50 years earlier in the course of the forced Christianization by Charlemagne. The uprising spread across the whole of Saxony, threatened to eliminate the nobility and the church in Saxony, and endangered the Carolingians' claim to power in Saxony. From 842 onwards, it was bloodily suppressed by the Saxon nobility, partly with Frankish help. The origin of the uprising was based on social tensions among the Saxon estates, and the timing can be traced back to the weakening of the Saxon nobility and the simultaneous call-up of all frillings and lates to arms. 
The outbreak of the uprising was facilitated by the Carolingian Brothers' War of 840-843, which had led to a split in the Saxon nobility. The people are still begging you to be softened. The people will be terrible when they rebel. When they take what you refuse by force. Gentlemen, have you never heard of Datsa? He was burned on the Iron Throne. Has memory been turned into the opposite? His spirit is fire itself. So be careful that he does not suddenly reduce you to ashes. The German Peasant's War, or Revolution of the Common Man, refers to the totality of uprisings by peasants, townspeople and miners that broke out in 1524 for economic and religious reasons in large parts of Thuringia, Saxony and Southern Germany, especially Franconia, Tyrol and Switzerland. During these uprisings, the peasants made their first demands in the Twelve Articles of Memmingen, which are considered an early formulation of human rights. In Swabia, Franconia, Alsace, German Lorraine and Thuringia, the uprisings were suppressed by landowners and regional rulers in 1525, and in the electorate of Saxony and Tyrol in 1526, with an estimated 70,000 to 75,000 people losing their lives. The Peasants' War was preceded by uprisings in Livonia, Hungary, Datsa Uprising, England, and Switzerland. The Peasants' War of 1524-1526 did not suddenly break out across German territories. Rather, it is part of a long series of European uprisings and acts of resistance that stretches from the late Middle Ages to modern times. Peasants had already risen up in Switzerland, Flanders, and England in the 13th and 14th centuries, and in Bohemia in the 15th century. In the Southern Haars and the Golden Owl, the Fleglers rose up between 1412 and 1415. In Switzerland, peasants rose up against the cities of Zurich and St. Gallen in 1489, and against Lucerne, Bern, and Solitorin in 1513. After that, the Bunchu was formed, 1460 in Hegar, 1493 in Alsace, 1502 in the Diocese of Spire, 1513 in Breisgau, and 1517 on the Upper Rhine. In the Diocese of Würzburg, unrest broke out in 1476 in the wake of the Pacher von Nicholshausen. In Upper Swabia, the seizing of the landowners provoked actions against the princely Abbey of Kempton and the Abbey of Oxenhausen around 1500 AD. In Württemberg, poor Conrad rose up in 1514. The numerous citizen uprisings, especially in southwest German cities between 1509 and 1514, were mostly supported by the poorer and underprivileged classes and were directed against the economic and political privileges of the patricians and the clergy. The clergy were just as opposed to any change. Catholicism in its then existing form represented the core pillar of feudalism. The church institutions were usually organized in a feudal manner themselves. Hardly a monastery existed without associated villages. The church derived its income primarily from donations, the sale of indulgences, and tithes. The latter was also an important source of finance for the nobility. The only reform efforts aimed at abolishing the old feudal structures within the cities came from the growing bourgeoisie of the cities, but remained weak as they too were dependent on the nobility and clergy. As late as 1525, Luther criticized the arrogant behavior of the princes in his exhortation to peace. Only after the Weinsberg massacre did he clearly side with the princes and strongly condemn the rebels. Against the murderous and robber gangs of peasants, they should be smashed, strangled, stabbed, secretly and publicly, whoever can, just as one must kill a mad dog. However, Luther only published his work against the murderous and robberous gangs of peasants at a time when the peasants' defeat was already foreseeable. After 1525, Protestantism lost its revolutionary spirit and, with Luther's support, cemented the prevailing social conditions with the dogma be subject to authority. The largest of the three was the Baldringer Hoffen, more than 12,000 peasants, citizens, and clergy gathered in the Baldringer Reed near Biberac within a few days. The Seehofen near Lindau also consisted of around 12,000 men, including many simple clergymen and mercenaries. 
The 7,000 Algar farmers, who were rebelling primarily against the Prince Abbot of Kempton, camped near Lubas. The three Upper Swabian peasant groups wanted above all to improve their living conditions and not to start a war. They therefore relied on negotiations with the Swabian League. Fifty representatives of the three peasant groups met in the free imperial city of Mamingen, whose citizens sympathized with the peasants. Here the leaders of all three groups tried to articulate the peasants' demands and support them with arguments from the Bible. At the end of March 1525, the army of Waldbrugzeel assembled in Ulm. A little further down the Danube near Lyfium, 5,000 peasants had gathered around the preacher Jacob Wehe, who plundered monasteries and noble residences in the wider area. The army of the Swabian League therefore marched to Lyfium and wiped out individual marauding peasant groups on the way there. On April 4, 1525, the first major battle took place near Lyfium, in which the Lyfium band was defeated. The city of Lyfium had to pay a fine, Wehe and the other leaders of the band were executed. On April 12th, the Swabian League's forces confronted the Baltringer group, which was quickly defeated. The peasants were disarmed and each had to pay a high fine. On April 16th, the Württemberg peasants gathered. The 8,000 strong force entered the city of Stuttgart and moved on to Boblingen in May. The Battle of Frankenhausen on May 15, 1525 was one of the most important battles during the German Peasants' War. In it, the rebellious peasants of Thuringia led by Munzer were completely defeated by a prince's army. Munzer himself was captured and beheaded in Mulhausen on May 27 after being taken to the Heldrungen fortress and tortured. On May 23rd, a group of 18,000 Breisgau and Southern Black Forest peasants took Freiburg and Breisgau. After the success, the leader Hans Muller wanted to rush to the aid of the besiegers of Radolfsel, but only a few farmers went with him, most wanted to go back to tending to their fields. So their force was relatively small when they were defeated by Archduke Ferdinand of Austria shortly afterwards. Waldberg Zeal encountered the Bright Light group of Franconian farmers near Würzburg on June 4th, and since this had been abandoned the day before by Gotts von Berlichingen under a pretext, the leaderless farmers had no chance. 8,000 farmers were killed in two hours. After this victory, the troops of Bauernjord George Truxus von Waldberg Zeal turned south again and defeated the insurgents in the Algar at the end of July. In four months, George Truxus von Waldbrugzeel's army had covered more than 1,000 kilometers. The Werehofen, which operated in Thuringia in April and May 1525 under the leadership of Hans Sippel, disbanded after Count Wilhelm IV of Henneberg Schlusingen signed the Twelve Articles. Sippel and the other leaders were captured and executed in Eisenach. Other peasant groups were crushed. On June 3, 1525, the Bildhauser Hoffen, together with the rebels from Meiningen, were defeated in the battle between Meiningen and Dreisegacker by a united force of princes led by Elector John of Saxony. In June 1525, the rebel groups in the Palatinate Peasants' War were defeated in the Battle of Pfedersheim. By September 1525, almost all battles and punitive actions had been concluded. Emperor Charles V and Pope Clement VII thanked the Swabian League for its intervention. Individual peasant groups, such as that of the Tyrolean Michael Geismer, remained secret for several years. Several outlaw peasants continued to live in the forests as bandits for decades. You can still hear them rustling in the walls today. But there were no more major uprisings. The surviving rebels were automatically placed under imperial ban and thus lost all rights and privileges, making them outlaws. The consequences for numerous castles and monasteries were devastating. A total of around 1,000 were partially or completely destroyed between 1524 and 1525. In Bamberg alone, almost 200 castles were destroyed or damaged within just 10 days in mid-May. In Thuringia, Halberstadt, and Wernigerode alone, around 300 monasteries were destroyed. In the rebellion areas, the loss due to the direct consequences of the Peasants' War amounted to 2.5 to 3% of the total population. 
The number of fatalities is estimated at 70,000 to 75,000. In relation to the entire empire, this would have been 0.5% of the population at that time. Schwarz ist die Sorge und schwarz unser Brot und schwarz ist die Fahne der Bauernnot. Schwarz ist die Erde wohl unter dem Flug und schwarz geht der Bauer im Trauerzug zu, zu, zu. Und schwarz geht der Bauer, Bauer im Trauerzug. Wir pflügen und sehen und schaffen nun Ruh. Wir ernten und wissen doch nicht wozu. Denn was wir erringen mit unserer Kraft, das wird uns genommen und fortgerafft. Das wird uns genommen und fortgerafft. Was uns die Steuer zum Leben noch lässt, dass wir uns als Zinsen herausgepresst. Und was wir verkaufen, das bringt uns nicht sein, da möge der Teufel noch Bauer sein. Da möge der Teufel noch Bauer sein. Jetzt sind wir am Ende, wir wollen nicht mehr. Wir sind ein verzweifeltes Bauernherr. Schwarz ist die Sorge und schwarz unser Brot. Und schwarz ist die Fahne der Bauernnot. Und schwarz ist die Fahne.